um, and I'll take the sedirant. Okay, that's the meeting now recording, so I'll take the sedirant of the Hamilton Area Committee on the 31st of August 2022. Councillor Carmichael? No. Nope. I uh, have apologies from Councillor Chalmers. Councillor Clark, I can see that you're present. Councillor Devlin? No. Nope. Um, apologies apologies from Councillor Devlin, thank you. Um, also present are Councillors Dewar, Donnelly and Falconer. Uh, Councillor Handybod is present, as is Councillor Horn. I have apologies from Councillor Hose. Councillor Johnson Dempsey is present, as is Councillor Wiley Keat. I have apologies from Councillor McCreary. Also present are Councillors <coughs> MacDonald and McGeever. Councillor McLachlan. Oh, I can see that you are present. I have apologies from Councillor Nelson. Councillor Razak is present. I have apologies from Councillor Ross. Councillor Thompson. Nope. And Councillor Toner is present. We also have a number of officers present at today's meeting. So with that, I'll pass you back to the Chair to commence today's business. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Elizabeth Ann. Item 1, have we any declaration of interest? Thanks, Chair. Um, agenda item 7, that called Burns Club. I'm a member. Item two, minutes of the previous meeting, pages three to six. Any comments, observations? No. Can we approve these minutes? Thank you. Items for noting. Three, please, Scotland. Right. We've got Police Scotland to do a presentation. I'd like to invite Chief Inspector Tony Gallagher and Inspector Paul Doyle to deliver the presentation. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us. Uh, my name is Inspector Paul Doyle. I'm the Area Inspector for Hamilton. Um, and beside me is uh, Chief Inspector Tony Gallagher. Um, I'm going to talk you through just what we've been doing over the last couple of months uh, and more than willing to take any questions at the end. Uh, and Chief Inspector Gallagher will obviously be here to have a quick input with you as well and take any questions. If we go to the next point, please. I'm here from the community policing uh, team. Uh, obviously, we are work alongside our response colleagues as well as uh, nationally uh, with the rest of our specialist departments. Um, we are, as I said, supported by uh, our national policing teams, our specialist officers, uh, but locally we are the pe people that will be problem solving within your community. If you go to the next slide, please. I've listed here the four priorities that Lanarkshire Division, Q Division, uh, are focusing on over the last year. Obviously, we're conducting a national survey at the moment to see, with consultation with all our uh, public and our partners, to see how um, these priorities will reflect uh, Q Division or Lanarkshire Division going forward into the next year. Our first priority, though, that we'll be discussing is reducing violence and disorder. And if we go to the next point, uh, public protection and protecting people at risk of harm. Uh, for the third point, please. Tackling housebreaking and acquisitive crime. And the last point will be reducing the harm caused by substance misuse, which obviously in Scotland is a, a key priority given the fact that we have so many drug deaths, uh, possibly the highest in Europe at this stage. If you go to the next slide, please. We're looking now at post-COVID-19, where we're coming out of the pandemic and looking to engage meaningfully and in person with our groups and our communities. Although for Police Scotland it was largely business as usual through the pandemic, most of our meetings and consultations with the greater public and our partners were done by MSS, MS teams. And we're looking to start engaging more face to face where appropriate uh, and going out back into the community and back in a part with our partners uh, to meet uh, on a one on one basis. 
We've noticed that over the last year, our demand has changed in that 73% of incidents have related to no crime incidents for us. And what that means is that we've had an increase in missing person inquiries, vulnerable persons, people looking for advice from the police, assisting our partners and uh, engaging with dist distress brief intervention incidents for mental health. So a lot of support to our partnership agencies. If we go to the next slide, please. What we're looking to do is uh, basically work in partnership and achieve a kind of holistic approach in terms of partnership working so that we can at all times be cost effective and to ensure that we're giving the best level of service uh, to the communities that we serve. We're looking to engage with our partners and communities to share information and resources, ensuring that safety plans are implemented for our vulnerable persons within the community and that preventative action is sought and enforcement is robust with our repeat offenders. And we're doing this uh, by partnership working, uh, by working with um, our you know, SLC partners um, and often giving an example here of community safety hubs, meeting on a weekly basis, we'll be engaging with um, Scottish Fire and Rescue Services, local authority housing and anti-social investigation teams so that we're joined up working to solve local problems. If we go to the next slide, please. Taking first then uh, violence and disorder, what we've been doing locally is reviewing our policing plans to ensure that we are at all times intelligence led. We're putting officers in the right place at the right time with the right resources. We're listening to our communities and elected members. We're identifying crime trends early at locations and we're getting these informed by our analysts as well. Um, and we are targeting the offenders and locations identified prior to deployment and we're engaging with our curfew bills and enforcing them. And this can mean utilising not only the community officers and response officers, but also our mounted branches, our divisional anti-violence reduction units, quad bikes uh, that we have based at Lark Hall and other specialist units. But we're not always focused on enforcement. We are focused on engagement and education as well. So we have been doing a lot of school inputs uh, and working closely with our campus officers. We've had days of action to enforce uh, court-issued warrants 16 apprehension warrants were enforced last month. We've been working with the Hamilton bid in the town centre to ensure that we've introduced taxi wardens late at night to help uh, take away disorder from uh, after hours within the town centre. Um, we've got dedicated town centre officers who are engaging with the bid and the uh, retail parks and the town centre uh, as well. We've been attending town centre events, which I'll speak a little bit more of later on. And we've been engaging closer relationships with our retailers through our town centre officers and really investing within that. And that's helped uh, tackle a variety of issues. It's, engaged, it's increased our engagement with the pub watch meetings and our multi-agency meetings. If we go to the next slide, please. And again, protecting people from risk of harm. We've been to do that and achieve that. We've been engaging in a lot of environmental risk assessments. Last month, we did 56 uh, risk assessments to ensure that our most vulnerable members in our community are being safeguarded. We've attended and supported 11 adult support meetings as well, again, to provide meaning, meaningful support to social work and to those vulnerable people. Our community officers have been engaging in local groups, such as attending multicultural LGBTQ events within Hamilton Town Centres, assisting local market traders as well, um, and also um, attending at the David Livingston Centre where they held an open day, which was organised by one of our PCs, mm -hmm. which had horses, dogs, quad bikes, a marine unit, along with uh, fire safety rescue, supported by the local uh, retailers as well, and it had 1,500 uh, persons there. There is actually a link to a YouTube site which gives a short video where our community officers were on it as well, that at your own leisure you can maybe have a look at. Um, and it really reinforces our engagement and commitment to uh, the local communities there. On top of that, we've been doing road safety campaigns with three specific days of action, which has led to a number of motorists uh, or offences being detected and reported. And again, engaging with people so that we're passing on that education around road safety as well. We'll go to the next slide, thank you. Again, moving on to a cause of crime. We've had many days of action uh, over the last month. We've had six theft by shoplifting of TVs at various stores being detected that resulted in several property search warrants being executed at people's home addresses. 
We have now have a male remanded in custody. Another male was reported for 25 vandalisms to motor vehicles, high value motor vehicles uh, throughout the town centre. Um, and again, our PACT team, our organised crime team, along with our local divisional alcohol and violence reduction unit, identify three males for 31 theft of motor vehicles within the area as well. In terms of reducing people from harm from substance misuse, we have been distributing, distributing a lot of uh, drug support services, working with addiction services within the Burn Bank area as well as SLC and social work um, and engaging in smart recovery. Our community police have also submitted over 100 SID logs. Um, this is now being developed into packages for drugs that our organised crime teams will be progressing. Can we move on to the next slide, please? We're also engaged within um, our drug prevention work, um, where we are having essentially a drug collection scheme. This is where we're engaging with uh, local licensed premises that if their staff are recovering drugs, either through um, searches, people going to clubs, or they're recovering it just by finding it in toilet areas or wherever else, um, they're putting it within an amnesty bin and our local drugs team are coming down and uh, analysing, weighing and recording this. And the reason for this is we're using it as a, an early warning system where we're identifying drug trends uh, within our communities and again being able to then target specific advice out to drug users and our community groups as well as licensed premises of engaging threats to the community. If we go to the next slide, please. And again, just here, just some uh, work that's ongoing, as I said. Uh, we are engaging with our town centre um, in, in order that we're doing community safety events. Our community safety officers are going along with trading standards and holding various stalls um, and engaging with market traders and retailers in order to give them safety advice. Uh, we did the David Livingston Centre as well, which I mentioned. We're also running a junior cop programme, um, which is uh, officers are going into schools in the local area um, and they are running a four-week programme that's giving uh, pupils an indication of what it's like to be a police officer as well as developing leadership um, skills and kind of confidence building as well. And I believe that's also being rolled out to a further four schools now that the schools have returned within the Greater Hamilton area. We're taking uh, action to tackle the anti-sectarian graffiti, which I know Burn Bank was targeted badly with as well. And again, that's working with our community safety groups with SLC Council uh, and the anti-social teams to target any offenders and to get that uh, reduced and minimised as soon as we possibly can. We've also had a number of summer fun days that the community policing departments went along to, to engage with uh, youths, to give them an insight into what the police do and also build those community relationships that possibly have been taken a bit of a hit due to COVID-19. And a lot of that... Um, is designed to find early and effective resolutions to youth disorder, provide that community reassurance, give a robust policing to offenders and signpost any diversionary activities uh, that we see fit. And that really ends this, uh, this presentation, if there's any questions. OK, thanks very much for that, gentlemen. Are there any questions, observations? Councillor Donnelly. Yes, thank you very much for that report. Thank you very much for that report. Um, we were involved with the Hill House and you know the Fundy or the festival uh, that was at the weekend, um, and it's I've got praise to the South Lanarkshire Council where I made contact with them. There was graffiti on the building. Uh, there was like phone numbers, uh, which was totally inappropriate for a, a an event where children were going to be. And our, our guys got onto that very very quickly. I think I only gave them a that day uh, to, to come out and remove the graffiti, which they uh, jumped to, you know, they, they really a, applied um, and come out and removed that graffiti before the event kicked off at 10 o'clock, which was really fantastic. Um, so that link is really, really helpful um, because it could have antagonised other people, because I think it was somebody's personal phone number. Uh, it was not nice circumstances. Um, so that was that was useful. 
Um, but yeah, they, I think the engagement with the police, and we had to get the police out later on at night. So uh, that engagement, uh, knowing that you are there and that you are responding to the community in a very positive way is very helpful. Um, and I think a lot of the work that you're doing in Burnbank, I'm part of Hudson, so I know that a lot of the work that you are doing there um, in order to remove the graffiti and uh, change the direction there uh, is very, very welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for that, Mary. Any other questions? Councillor McDonald. Thanks, Alan. Uh, just one of the things I want to bring up again, it's about graffiti. I happen to work in Blantyre Industrial Estate, which can be bombarded with, and it's racial, uh, and it's to do generally when there's two particular football teams play. Um, one, there, there's been one wall, and it's been there, covered in graffiti for quite some time. Now, it's an empty unit, so obviously... Whoever owns it is not remotely interested. Is there anything that you can do or... Uh... Yeah, I'm happy to provide my contact details. Um, and then if you um, either drop me an email or give me a phone call, um, I can <coughs> arrange for that to be sorted for you. Uh, again, if, if it's just getting removed, we can speak to the South Lanarkshire Council um, and they can have that removed for you. And certainly we can uh, conduct an inquiry into it and see if we can find the people responsible. Thank you. Uh, Councillor McLachlan. Is that live now, Chair? That's you there, David. That's uh, you, David. Can you, you. can you hear me? I can hear you. I can even see you. Okay. Chair, thank you. Um, a good report. Thanks very much for that. I've got three questions. Um, the first question is a kind of couple of points to it. Uh, it's about the taxi marshals in Hamilton. Um, you mentioned that, that you're working alongside the bid. Uh, the bid currently pay for that, um, and it's not... It's not going to be permanent. You just don't have the funds to do that. Um, so I wanted to ask if you think, in general, if taxi marshals help, and if they do, are they helping in Hamilton? And if they are helping in Hamilton and it's not sustainable that the bid tries to continue to pay for that, can you identify or advise if there's any funding seems available? Maybe through the police, I don't know. I doubt it very much, to be honest, but there we go. We might as well ask. Um, so is there any chance of any type of funding to make this continue if you feel that it does make a difference to the town centre because I'm aware that there's been a, a, a lot of issues within the town centre, not necessarily related related at, to the taxi rank, you know, there have been graffiti, there have been vandalism, bins upturned, a lot of antisocial behaviour and so on, which is away from the rank, but there's a suggestion that if people are getting away from the, the, the nightclub, they're not going to be wandering around the town centre at night, so it's a bit of a kind of open question at the moment whether or not uh, I welcome them, I really do welcome them, but I just would like to know how valid they are. Um, if you think they're useful, if there is an impact, and get back to the point about funding. Chair, I'm going to leave my mic on because I've got another couple of questions after that, if you don't mind. I'd agree. I do think they're valuable, um, and we do welcome them and their, their services. Um, it's certainly always going to be beneficial if we can clear the town centre um, and get people up the road safely uh, and quickly. Um, I am aware of the vandalisms that happened with the bins being upturned, um, and certainly our town centre officers took action to, to stop that. Um, in terms of funding from the police, I would suggest it was a, a no from us. So there's no no funding. I, I, I didn't think there would be, if I'm honest. Yeah, and I understand that. Do you know of any... Yep. Um, it's certainly something uh, that we can discuss with uh, the bid team uh, and possibly... Oh, 
Okay, David, another couple of questions. Okay, David, you another couple of questions. Tell me if you can hear me, Chair. Can you hear me? I'm only seeing more. I'm showing. I've seen the full screen, but I don't know if you can hear me yet, Chair. We can hear you. I can see you now, but um, when when. We were suggested to leave our mic on. Mines get cut off here at the request to speak again. Teething problems. Nope, nope, no. Nope. It looks like I'm back on again. Can you hear me, Chair? Yeah, I can hear you, David. Any idea why it keeps cutting off? Yeah. No? No, we'll worry about that later. I'm all right. It's all right for you sitting there. I'm sitting here like, <laughs> kind of get asking my questions. <laughs> um, road safety issues. Um, <clears throat> I raised this with Alan Waddle at the Safer South Lanarkshire Board, and I wonder if, 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 if you could maybe add some local input. Um, electric scooters, Police Scotland made quite a big issue a number of months ago about electric scooters um, and there was lots of publicity in social media etc about these being 100% illegal under no circumstances can you use them anywhere other than in purely private ground like a back garden but you can't go very far, far in a back garden so it's inevitable that these things are easily purchased either in shops or online and people are buying them and they're using them in their hundreds and I've never seen anyone being stopped or questioned and I've never heard of anyone having been stopped or questioned or charged or having it confiscated. I'm pretty sure if that was the case, you'd have the usual suspects on social media complaining and moaning like, oh, I'm not going to say what they've been moaning like, but anyway, if their son or their daughter's scooter had been taken away from them by the police. So it worries me that we've made quite a big issue on social media but it would appear, and I'm holding back from making a, a suggestion that nothing's been done, but it would appear that it's not really being policed. Um, so that's the electric scooters part. And only just yesterday, yesterday at the roundabout at Holy Cross School in Morrison's, just as the school was coming out, it was really, really heavy with traffic. There was four young guys in bikes, motorbikes, actual proper motorbikes, four of them come flying through the roundabout, weaving in and out of traffic, um, nearly hit my car, and he headed down into White Hill. And the reason I'm raising this is because this is a problem that's been raised countless amounts of times by residents within White Hill about people running about with illegal quads and motorbikes. So yesterday I was, I was actually waiting to hear the bang off the side of my car because they were weaving sharply in and out through the traffic. And it was actually very frightening to see it. So those two issues, uh, and, and Chair, if, you, if you'll indulge me, I've got another question after that regarding a different subject. Okay. Okay. The electric scooters. Uh, taking that first, um, we will investigate and uh, take any action against any criminality that we we come across. Um, I don't have any figures off the top of my head in terms of how many charges or offences we found in terms of electric scooters for this area or indeed uh, Scotland. Um, but certainly, if officers are out and about on routine patrols. Uh, and they come across an offence, then the expectation is that they would take action on that. Um, I can't comment on why it's not featuring on social media um, as to detections around that. Um, in terms of uh, the traffic problems towards Whitehill, we're certainly more than happy to give uh, some community officers to go up and, and do a day of action uh, to target offenders and to engage um, with uh, drivers up there to provide education and enforcement around there. What I would encourage is that if you are seeing issues, if you do contact us, 
either via 101 or by engaging with uh, myself and the other community policing team and make us aware of any issues that you're having in terms of this uh, so that we can we can take some action against it. Supplementary to that, yeah, it's, um, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, and, and I know it's difficult because these four guys drove past, they were just young boys, didn't have helmets on, there's no registration numbers, and they're gone in a flash and they've disappeared into the woods. So, to be honest, you're right, it should be reported. I didn't report it at the time. I was picking a young person up from, from the school, taking for a driving lesson. Um, but it has been reported on numerous occasions. Community guys come to the, the neighbourhood board meeting and it's raised a lot. Um, I know it's an almost impossible to, to try and catch these guys because you can't pursue them. It's just crazy to try and pursue them in a vehicle because that, that makes a bad situation even worse. But, but, but it is a problem, it is there, and it doesn't seem to be going away. I haven't got a solution. <laughs> you know, I, I'm looking at a solution, I'm, I'm bringing it to your attention because road safety was mentioned. But in particular about the electric scooters, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> crime statistics don't get reported on social media. Uh, and you know, you know, your comments well made, and I take that, I take that in the chin. But when something happens on the local <coughs> social media pages, it usually becomes quite a talking point. Some poor week to these scooter taking off and for these big bad cops. If that, if it was happening, you would hear about it in social media. I'm pretty sure, but maybe I'm wrong. But it just seems to be that it's, it, it seems to be going. Um, and continuing, and it appears from what I'm, where I'm standing, and I'm a member of the public when I'm out there, just like any other member of the public, and it's almost acceptable. Uh, there was a social media uh, campaign, but if you didn't see it in social media, you wouldn't know. So it just appears, oh, there's the Wayne's out on their scooters. Look at them having a great time. When these things are very dangerous, it's something. There was one in Burnbank Road, the wee guy was actually going down on the road, not in the pavement. <laughs> We, the traffic was down to 20 mile an hour. We wondered what it was, then eventually we seen it. So the scooter was doing 20 mile an hour. A young guy about 12, no protective clothing on. He could really, really hurt himself, potentially even worse. And the damage that it can cause to some other person's car because these things aren't insured. So, you know, you, you've sort of answered it. And I'm probably having a bit of a moan here. Forgive me for that because well, this is the place to do it, isn't it? So thanks for your, your response. And, and I really do appreciate the fact that yeah, get some response teams into the area in Whitehill because it is prevalent in that area. Um, the graffiti matter, yeah, it, it was really difficult for a time there in Burnbank. It was terrible, um, some of the stuff that, that, that we've seen on the walls. And it was getting addressed. Um, I, I was speaking to the, the, the council and they'll, they'll attend to it as a matter of urgency if it's of a sectarian or racist nature. And they were doing that. But I'm wondering... <clears throat> You know, if you catch someone doing it, I'm pretty sure you'd stick a set of handcuffs on them and arrest them and do what you've got to do. How easy or how difficult is it, probably more to the point, how difficult is it to detect this and actually get captures for these people who do this? Because it just seems to be the, you can tell with the style and, and the type of language that's used, it's, it's, it's probably one, the same person or a group of people who are doing this. And, 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 and touch wood, I haven't seen it for a wee while yet. I'm not saying it's not there. But um, I wonder what your detection rate is like. How successful have you been trying to catch any? Have you got any leads? Is have you been getting any ideas who it is, or is it just something that's it's just so difficult that you, it's, it's hard to pin them down? Off again, yeah. If I can just come in on that, uh, Paul, it's Paul's area here. Hence, hence why I'm giving him a bit of primacy in here, apart from the fact I don't like looking at myself on the screen. So, um, yeah, there, there are a couple of things in that. Um, I would suggest, or I would say that, uh, from my own point of view, that the, the issue isn't one that's reflected in our incidents coming forward with regards to um, a priority problem within the area is, is, is persons going about in scooters. Yes, we have put out the... The information to the public is it's becoming more and more prevalent that the scooters are becoming a mode of transport that, that will pick up in the future. So it's important for us to to put that information out um, that they're not road legal uh, machines, so they shouldn't be on the road with them. Again, um, if officers find them in that situation, they will deal with it then and there. Um, I, I wouldn't say unless there was other issues ongoing at the time that that would manifest itself in uh, handcuffs being put in individuals. Um, however, um, the, the likely outcome of that is a, is a scooter being seized and taken into our possession. So I would ask you a couple of questions in that. Um, 
one of which is, is this something that's being reported to you by your constituents? Or is this something or just on your own observations you've been out and about with that? Because the, you, you've already, I suppose, answered the question in some sort of ways with regards to reporting there. It's important that if there is particular issues in the, the community, then we only know about it if, if it's reported to us. It's that, that contract between, between ourselves, the community, and yourselves being the representatives is really important. If we are not hearing about it, then unless the officers are encountering it at that particular time or unaware of the problem. So, so that's a couple of things. Is this something that your constituents are, are bringing up to you with uh, frequency? Well, as far as the handcuffs are concerned, I was talking about the, 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 the graffiti artist. If you catch them, I'm sure you'd put a set of handcuffs on them and take them away and arrest them. I wasn't referring to the wee boys on the scooters. Um, so if you're asking me what's been reported, the scooters, no, uh, no, nobody's reported that to me because I, I think I made the point earlier. I don't think many people actually realise that they're illegal. Um, I, I didn't realise they were illegal until I seen uh, Police Scotland's publicity on social media. Uh, so that's the only reason why I know that they're not allowed. Um, so if nobody's seen that, maybe they're not aware. So nobody's been reporting that to me. Uh, I'm a driving instructor, that's what I do for a living, so I'm on the road all the time and I see these scooters and they're extremely dangerous, the speed that they go at, sometimes there's two kids on them. And by the way, it's not just kids, I've seen adults on them as well, and the two of them standing on these scooters and they've got tiny wheels, they can get into a wobble, you have a wee bit of pop, you know, you, you can come off with that at speed, cause a lot of harm to yourself and a lot of harm to someone else's car. So that hasn't been reported to that's my own observation, but the graffiti, yes. Uh, I've lost count the amount of times that they've been reported to me. It's, it, when it happens, and it does happen, um, usually around a particular dates of the year, or if there's a particular football match on, and different things are happening uh, along that line, you, you tend to get more of it. And straight away, um, there's maybe a dozen people locally within my ward who have got my phone number, and I know what's coming, because when I see them coming, I see them phoning. And in fact, there's one guy, one man in particular, I wouldn't name him. Um, he's a member of a particular group officially, um, and he's volunteered to help to remove some of this stuff because he's a, he's afraid of some of the language that's used that can exacerbate the problem and encourage other people to reciprocate with their own version of the, the other side of their... I'm trying to be very, very careful here in my word. <laughs> The, 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 on, on the other side of that um, divide, you know, depending on what side of the fence you're sitting, what, what foot you kick me. Um, so people are really, really concerned about it. Uh, and people who are members of organisations are really concerned about it. Not just from one side, but from both sides. But the worry is that it, it can it can escalate and, and potentially maybe even get, get worse. But going back to the point, I wonder what detection rates you have to try and tackle that. That, that was, the, that was the, the third question I had. Um, and that's that's one I referred to about the handcuffs. If you've seen somebody doing it, I'm pretty sure you'd go like this one, you can't even be doing that. But you, we don't. I've never seen anybody doing it, but they are doing it because we know that. We see it on the walls. Yeah, that, 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 David. That, sorry. Sir Gallica. Yeah, that, that is the issue, is actually catching them in the act of doing that. That's somewhat difficult. Um, mm. This is something Paul's already alluded to, the town centre, eh, graffitis, etc. And with our colleagues, um, we, we'll, we'll look at that Blantyre side of it as well. South Lanarkshire Council have been really good in assisting us with the removal of the graffiti and that's what we aim to do is to have it removed very quickly. I'm aware um, that the, the, the football at the weekend's coming up. We do anticipate that. We have additional patrols out um, around the reasons of disorder but also around the sectarianism uh, issue which, which you're, you're kind of alluding to there. Burn Bank uh, suffered a, a bit of a problem there for a bit of a time with graffiti and we were looking at uh, a few individuals for that. Uh, right off the bat, graffiti is a notoriously difficult crime to to solve um, because, yeah, you can build up a picture, uh, an intelligence picture of persons using certain styles of it, but that's not always apparent um, and they're not always from this area. I think the previous intel, particularly in the Burn Bank area, was that um, persons affiliated to certain football teams or groups were, were uh, indulging in that and they're not always from the area either. I think we were speaking about this prior to coming to the meeting and there, you know, there was a, a particular issue that um, the officers had, had looked into by the to graffiti that, that took us to a, a school and you saw some of the it, it's sub, you know, sub evidence, I suppose consequential evidence that was there in terms of 
a style of writing on a jotter at a school and comparing that to, to writing that was apparent outside the school on the walls, but however the fiscal uh, wouldn't take that because the provenance between the two was too weak to take on. So we do we do try our best, the officers do try our best to kind of look um, and target individuals. Sometimes that is more from us speaking to them and letting them know that we know that they are doing it. Um, and, and I know a certain individual that we were uh, dealing with there, obviously I can't I can't mention who it was, but they were spoken to, um, which led to a decrease, funnily enough, in graffiti in the area. So, so yes, I can't give you a, a solution to that that's going to eradicate the issue. It, will, it has always been an issue, and it will continue to be an issue. Again, uh, we just need, if people are seeing them doing it and they know it's in their community, then they, they, they should give us a call via Crime Stoppers and let us know and give us a starter for 10. Another thing that we spoke about previously was getting into some of the stores and speaking to them with regards to spray cans, etc., who... They were selling them to in the first instance to try and identify what you know what kind of material was used to put them on. I think we had one instance in the town centre was actually a motion paint that was used, which is uh, quite unusual. But I would suggest that was taken from someone's house to do that rather than the shop. So, mm -hmm. so we're trying to engage with the stores around that, around the sale of that. But again, that's another decrease in market. I would say uh, from the past is that the sale of those, and there's only certain stores that will do it. So certain wee avenues that we're looking at for that, we um, can't say we'll solve it tomorrow, but we have been and will be looking at it going forward, particularly when we've got um, the you know Celtic Rangers playing at the weekend as well. We do expect um, there'll be issues around that, and there'll be out, patrols out and about, uh, both mobile and foot patrols, in in the areas of Hamilton Town Centre and the, the the periphery. Thank you very much, Chair. With your indulgence, one very small point. You mentioned the graffiti and the styles and things like that. There is a, an initial almost that I keep seeing, and it's UC. I wonder if you're aware that that is popping its head up, and if you are aware of it, do you know what it means? <laughs> I'm I still on. Am I? Yeah, um, yeah uh, we are aware of that as well. Um, U, UB, I think, was Union, Be Union Bears, and UC as a as a take from the other side on that. I'm not sure exactly um, what what that uh, relates to, but I believe it's a it's a it's a it's something to do with the Union Bears and it's a Celtic. Ultra Celtic, there you are. I, I, in fact, right. I think that is what it is. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Thank thanks you. for that. Uh, we've now got Councillor Keats. Okay, Gavin. Councillor Keats. Okay. Come back to him. And the others. Okay, there are no further questions. I'd just like to thank the two gentlemen before I do. Could I ask the reintroduction of, sorry, the reintroduction of community councils. And normally we used to have a police officer would come along and give a report, though we do get a written report. Is it intended to reintroduce? Officers come along. No. It's just in general because people are more reassured and they, they speak to the report. And it gives you that contact and sometimes they pick up some information as well. Okay, thanks. Somebody's to close off from your part. Um, it's just, just really um, on the back of the presentation. Thanks, Paul. Um, it's always good to someone else to, to do the presentation on that. Um, 
There's a few things in there I'd just like to touch on. Um, and of course, um, as, as the politics of things that I steer clear of in all instances here. Seventy-three percent, as you see in there, um, our calls are related to issues other than crime. Okay, so we do often hear, um, and it's a, it's a proper question to ask: Is where are the police? Because we don't see them about. Your police officers are in the hospital. Sometimes the majority of a shift sitting with people with mental health issues, or they're at the house of people with mental health, health issues, or they're looking for missing people, children, particularly from um, children's homes. Or we're dealing with, unfortunately, um, society just now, we're dealing with the rise in suicides also. Okay, so it's important that people understand that our officers are extremely driven in terms of what they do when they turn up to their work. Best laid plans about some things to do with action plans, etc., are sometimes overtaken by events on that particular day, such as the dynamic nature of policing. All of the emergency services have their own issues in terms of funding, resources, etc. And as the police, um, we are I suppose, in, sort, in, in many occasions, most occasions, a lead agency in this, in terms of how we deal with incidents and assist our colleagues. Um, so that may well be reflected in, you know, taking people to hospital where the need is urgently there and their colleagues in the ambulance service have their own issues getting there. So all I ask is, is that the councillors here um, put that message out to people um, to make them understand that a bit better and push themselves um, up above to their respective uh, people to to look favourably upon us in terms of resource. And that these are these are issues at city executive level and discussed at a higher level at government. They're not they're not for me to to deal with. But but at the operational level, this is what it, it represents itself in terms of our resources and lack thereof. We will always do our utmost, and officers will always do their utmost to deal with the issues that are emerging in society locally um, in terms of um, the issues that present ourselves here, more importantly. So the priorities that, that were mentioned in the, the, the presentation are our present priorities, but they are changing. Policing really has to be, these days, um, done in a holistic manner. It was mentioned in the report here that's extremely important that we work together um, and pool our resources to deal with tackling issues. And it is around uh, graffitis and things like that. People think that's low order, but to some people that's an incredibly personal thing if it's happening in your neighbourhood. So um, there's loads of areas uh, which South Lanarkshire Council assist us in. Um, and I'm really pleased with some of the outcomes. Some of them um, you've heard in the report in there. Drugs deaths and another thing that was mentioned in the, the report, which... Um, our side of uh, South Lanarkshire QB subdivision, as we are, um, we have had quite a number ourselves of drugs death. I know it's on the, the the front page for the government as well in terms of how they deal with it. The drug strategy um, that, that Paul referred to there around the, the, the drugs drops within our nighttime economy, um, that's some of the, the stores who will be, or not stores rather, sorry, the nightclubs, etc., who have asked to... Um, where they find drugs that have been either fallen on the floor, to, to pick them up and, dis and put them into a box where we can then take them and have our laboratory um, get them turned around really quickly to see what the content of them is. It's really important that we know what's inside some of these, what, uh, some of these drugs that are causing the issues for persons who are obviously succumbing to them. And a lot of them are down to benzocaines, etc. what we call Class C drugs. Um, some of the things that used to mix them and the very things that cause the issue and kill people, I suppose, is the, is the you know, they put it. So that is designed to, to, to bring nighttime economy into place. We, we won't always, I'm sure, get, um, get the, the kind of response we're looking for, for, for obvious reasons around that. But that's how the second part of that that's not mentioned is the intelligence side of it. And I mentioned SID logs, and that won't be apparent to everybody what a SID log is, but that's basically a police intelligence log that's submitted. And that, in the majority, comes from the public, okay? And it comes from yourselves. So 
that's all I would ask you to do is to encourage via your websites you have them, people to phone crime stakers, stoppers to inform us. We already have a good relationship with our third sector. Uh, people who, in many instances, have more trust, I would imagine, than the police because of the penal nature, I suppose, and who we go about things with addicts, etc. But it's really important that locally we get a grip of that. So that strategy um, does involve uh, analysis uh, through drugs, uh, through drugs drops, as, as Paul has mentioned in there. But it's also intelligence focused. It will also be stop search focused as well in terms of police activity and around your your areas, which is intelligence led in terms of where the hotspots are in your areas. So where we are stop searching, um, it's not it's not a popular subject. It never is a popular subject. But however, we try to ensure that when we do it, it's in the right areas where people are either reporting drugs in their areas or where there's drug dealing in the area. Um, so it's entirely focused upon that, but it really needs uh, community input for it. So we'd urge you to utilise your websites to get that message out there. And probably lastly for me, I'll shut up. I do try to not to say much. People accuse me of saying far too much, and perhaps you're all too today. But the the the. LPP stuff, the, the police and partnership in terms of our new um, objectives, if you like, for the police going forward and what the community concerns are. This is the time to identify what are the issues in the area and what we need to police address going forward for the next um, few years. There is um, literature going around just now from the police, which has the QR code on it. Um, for, for you to engage with the questionnaires. I would hope that that's not news to the councillors uh, who are, are here today, that we are all aware and have contributed to that in some sort of way. But I'd like also, if you have the opportunity, to put that on your websites and encourage your constituents also to do likewise. Because it's really, really important that the public uh, feel that we are targeting the right things that they feel are the problems in their community. So police will inform that to a certain degree, and as will you. But it's really, really important that we get as many people from your constituencies as you possibly can involved in that. So my only ask is, if, if you don't have it, get in contact with uh, myself or Paul, and we'll make that available to you. There's certainly loads mm -hmm. of literature going about that we're trying to put out in the communities. So it's really, really important we engage. I've got a, a meeting tonight with Superintendent Andrew, Andrew Thompson, who's a lead here in Lanarkshire for that. <coughs> Um, for the South Lanarkshire side tonight, half past six to half past eight, which some of you may well be on, I'm sure. So, um, so I look forward to hearing from you later on. And um, to go back to one of the questions earlier from also from the committee, yes, uh, we will be re-engaging again with face-to-face -face meetings. I'm really looking forward to it. I've been the police for 25 odd years now. It's been a real difficult couple of years um, in terms of with, with COVID um, and the, the relationships between us all from a distance and on. MS teams, it's important we get back face to face and speak to one another again. So you'll certainly hear me unless you, you, you've thought this guy speaks too much and you learn to avoid me. But um, I'll certainly be out looking to speak to you. So um, thanks all uh, for listening to me. Please engage with that, uh, that, that process, um, the questionnaires, etc. Because it's really important we get a good idea of what people see as their problems, because that's how we get them on board with assistance. Thanks for your time. Right, thanks for that. Uh, I realise time's going on, but with three quick questions. Councillor MacDonald. Thanks, Chair. Um, regarding community councils, it seems so long ago that we spoke about that. Um, I was at the, the last Lark Hall Community Council, and they were complaining because there's no police officers in attendance. However, they did have a written report, and my comment to them was... You know, I, I happened, as I was going in, I happened to see the car go out with the blues and twos going. So I knew they were going somewhere else and it wasn't to the community council. So I did explain to them that, you know, you've got a report, that's great. You know, we're not asking the police to give up a lot of their time to come to community councils. However, once every two or three months would be good. I think it, it fills them full of confidence because they see... Who it is that, that who's the community cops that are coming to them? And I know I've met Stuart McDonald, so he's our, our new community sergeant. Um, and I've had a I meet, had a meeting with him last week, so that's encouraging too. Um, and uh, as I say, we look forward to seeing you all. Uh, thanks very much. Okay, we've...
Councillor. Hi there, are you able to hear me? No. Yeah. Are you able to hear me at all? No. We can hear yes. you. Yes. Right, brilliant. Uh, I can't hear what I'm saying, so just, I'll just have to take your word for it. Uh, firstly, thanks to the Chair and thanks to the officers for the report. Two quick questions. I'm cautious of time, so I'll put them together, although they're unrelated. Um, I represent Hamilton South, and three of our primary schools have been vandalised um, over the last few weeks. Wood Ted, St John's and St Elizabeth's. Um, I've liaised with the Council over the last few weeks, and I know that the security measures and CCTV procedures have been reviewed. Would you be able to reach out to these specific primary schools? And would you be able to advise if there'd been any uh, people held accountable for that spate of vandalism at the primary schools? And secondly, just on Councillor McDonald's point, um, I would agree with the police attending attendance at the community council meetings. I think that's an important, uh, would be an important and valuable uh, relationship to have in attendance at the community council meetings, specifically the Meek Lernick area, where we're having a considerable increase in road accident complaints and I wanted to know specifically if that's on your radar, the, the kind of road safety issues that our constituents are reporting in the Meek Lerner area. Thank you. Thanks for that. I'll try and remember all the, the questions that were there. Um, starting with the schools, yes, uh, we are aware of them. They are under investigation at the moment. Um, we haven't identified any persons responsible at this time, but we are working in partnership with SLC, the schools, the antisocial team as well, uh, and community wardens um, to try and minimise that going forward. A lot of it does appear to be youths uh, breaking into school in some cases to access the playing pitches and damaging fencing to do that. Um, and the other occasions, it's an active inquiry at the moment. Um, in terms of the community councils, absolutely. We're very keen to get back and um, start engaging with them and attending the meetings. The only thing we would ask is if you could send us an invite of when you're uh, going to hold them, uh, and we will certainly do our best, call permitting, to attend those meetings. Um, and I've forgotten, the, what was the, the, if you could clarify the last question again, please? Sorry, the last question oh, was about Nicola, Nicola, like, actually, We had two officers up there today doing with a speed gun, um, actually taking that on board. So uh, today was a day of action. Uh, two of the community officers were up with the Unipar gun, um, engaging motorists up there and it's something that is on the radar and we will be pursuing in the future as well. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for that. Councillor Donnelly. Um, yeah, thank you. Just to, to say that we had a great um, event in Hamilton Town Centre, which was part of the bid uh, and that was Pride, Pride Week. Um, so that went with a bang. As they say, it was absolutely fantastic um, and great. The police were there on display just in case there was any any problems. But that went really, really well. And that was very well welcomed by the community as well. On the community councils, I have furnished me Clarenock Community Council with the police officers that's for their area and they gave me their contact details and I've passed that to me Clarenock Community Council so that they can be invited along to their meetings. Okay, thanks for that, Mary. We've got Councillor Dempsey. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Mine's an easy one. Uh, just to thank the Inspector and Chief Inspector for the presentation and ask if the slide deck uh, could be provided to councillors just because it wasn't in the uh, board pack. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, of course. Um, certainly, we've, we sent them into the council, but we can certainly send them on to yourselves as well. Right, thank you. Yeah, I would a link as well to the, um, the the day that we organised down at the David Livingston that's worth a look as well, um, and it certainly links into some other uh, support services we're we're keen to to work alongside with. Okay, thanks for that. We have no further questions. I'd just like to thank the two gentlemen for the presentation, uh, and if we require to leave. 
more than welcome. And if you wish to stay. Well, we'll get back to some policemen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you leave your card? Sorry. Item four. Aye. Participatory budget budgeting footways. Colin Park to speak to matter. Colin. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, for that. Uh, this is a short paper uh, on participatory budgeting, and I'll call it PB for short, because this is the fourth paper I've delivered to the committees, and I can never say participatory budgeting more than once, so PB for short. So the purpose of this report is to advise the area committee of the outcome and level of engagement for the PB consultation exercise for £2.5 million this year for footway projects, and just to advise you of the next steps and ongoing steps, given the timescales where we are now. Following the participatory budgeting, investment in carriageways and footways last year, uh, this second phase of investment is now underway, uh, focusing on the improvement of footways. As was the case in 2021-22, uh, paragraph 3 there, uh, the split of financial, uh, the, the funds available, has been done across uh, the four areas based upon largely the estimated footway network length. And you'll see there at paragraph 3.3, .3, the second line of the table, uh, just under 840,000 has been allocated to the Hamilton area. Down at 3.5, just gives you details of what the public were asked to vote on, and they were asked to vote on three main themes. One, minor, re minor residential footways, two, main and distributor footways, and the last one there, footways in business areas. So the consultation ran between the 22nd of April and the 5th of June and was promoted in the usual manner via the Council's website, social media channels and the third sector networks. 4.3 uh, just identified how the funds were, were going to be split. So, uh, on conclusions of the vote, 60% of the funding would go to the top scoring theme, 25% to the second, and 15% to the third. And this allocation uh, was to allow to ensure that the, we had the flexibility to continue to target the key priority areas within each theme, but we also had the opportunity, based on engineering merit, uh, to make sure that funds were all allocated across the various uh, themed areas that we talked about. So 4.6, it just highlights that the results of the vote, uh, they are in Appendix 1, uh, and 4.7 just highlights that the quality of inf information is detailed at Appendix 2. Happy to take any questions uh, from those areas uh, if you have any. Uh, just moving on to Section 5 now, just a wee bit more detail. Uh, in line with the results of the vote, the funding was allocated as set out in the table below. So you see for Hamilton, just under 840,000. Uh, so the first place theme was residential footways. Uh, second place theme, which I've totally forgot what it was now, it's main and distributor footways. Uh, and then third place theme was uh, the kind of business area. So it was just over half, half a million for footways and residentials, just over 200,000 for uh, the second place theme, which has gone again from me, the main and distributor footways, and the last one was 125,000. So the detail uh, of the schemes in Hamilton are in Appendix 4. And again, I'm happy to take any questions in that, uh, that that members have. Importantly, just to highlight that given an already full and challenging workload, much of this work is already underway, uh, as intimated to yourselves from an email from me probably around about the kind of the back end of May, early, early June. Uh, that allowed us to continue to, to take opportunities and secure contractors, get, get work done uh, when the weather was, was suitable, and just to make sure we can maintain the, the, the kind of programme for the remainder of the year. So in terms of financial implications at Section 7 there, the intention is to spend the full £2.5 million uh, across 2022-23. However, as, as many of you will be aware, there are still issues ongoing with contractor material availability, which may see some spend move into 23-24. Just speaking to my colleague Grant earlier on today, coming over, we are making good progress on, on the Hamilton schemes, uh, and we are confident we, will, 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 we should be able to spend all of the funding this year. But just important to, to kind of flag up a very volatile market and as noted there at 7.2 uh, we are still seeing issues over material supply largely due to the Ukraine and Russian conflict 
uh, but we are making efforts to deliver them as quickly as we can. So for cl completeness as well, just to flag up, in addition to the PB funding, uh, there's also about circa one, one million of roads investment funding, which we, we routinely allocate to uh, roads and uh, footways across South Lanarkshire. And again, the specific schemes are shown at the bottoms of Appendix 4, uh, and so far as it relates to Hamilton. So just turning Chair back to the recommendation, uh, committee is asked to approve uh, the, the outcome, the level of engage, engagement for the PB consultation exercise for the 2.5 million for funding this year as noted. Thank you, Chair. Okay, <coughs> thanks for that, Colin. Quite any questions, observations, Councillor Clark? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, I think this is really positive, and I know the SNP group welcome. Uh, participatory budgeting and in this instance the public having a say on their own footways which they're certainly very knowledgeable about. In relation specifically to 4.9 on page 9, what do we plan to do to increase participation in these groups mentioned? Uh, I can speak from experience for under 24s being under 24 myself. It can be difficult to engage young people specifically out with school, like in the 18 to 24 categories, whereas, you know, under 18, you can go into schools to uh, help engage with them. And I understand it's you know, the responsibility of corporate comms, but have we considered using paid social media advertisement in order to tackle people of those, eight, those ages specifically? Uh, it can also be used to target certain localities that are underrepresented, because as we can see posts that don't have that. As I mentioned at an earlier committee this morning, posts that don't have that uh, paid element can can doesn't don't doesn't reach as much people as it probably should. Thanks. Thanks, Chair, and thanks, Councillor Clark. Uh, in terms of the kind of points that you, you raised, what we did last year, there was obviously similar areas where we were seeing an, an, un, an under-representation. I think we actually note there in one of them, uh, 4.8, the last, the last one, the bottom 20% of SIMDs were underrepresented last year, and we targeted that area, and we've seen it an increase this year. So for next year, uh, presuming this level of, of investment uh, and uh, initiative continues, then we will look at that point that you mentioned. Uh, I'm not sure whether Ron Delise uh, presenting the next the next paper, but certainly through Rhonda's team, uh, we'll be looking at any new initiatives to target them. So if you have any ideas, uh, send send them through to me. Paid social media advertising, I don't I don't don't know. Uh, it's obviously costly, and the whole idea of this is to try and make make sure the money goes in uh, to to where it's needed on the ground. What I would say, what was quite interesting. Uh, from an engineering point of view, engineers don't know everything, despite us perhaps giving that impression that, that we do. Uh, but we've got a good idea of where our investment needed in, 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 in residential streets, town centres, industrial areas as well. And the kind of split that we saw coming through at the very start there, I talked about 60% going into kind of, kind of residential streets. That tied in very much with what the results were from the public. So I get a degree of confidence that the officers that are on the ground inspecting these roads is tying in with what, what the communities are coming out with. So I think what we got, I can't, can't remember the exact figures, about nine, 900 odd or so, that gave us a good idea of where the money should be going. But again, a useful point to make, and we'll certainly consider that for next year. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Uh, Councillor Donnelly. Hi. Thanks very much for the very constructive report. And I'd like to speak to two streets that you've identified, which have had been inundated with complaints, people falling, etc. St Ninian's Place and Sherry Drive. Uh, so I'm glad to see that they've been identified as, as needing the footways uh, repaired. Um, also, I'm hopeful that the PB is going to continue for the footwear, for the foot... Um, and the footways and roads, um, because it is one way of getting the community on board and getting their point of view of where they're identifying that the work's needing to be spent. So, well done. Thank you. Thanks for that, Mary. Any further questions? OK. The committee agreed to note the report. Thank you. Item 5. Participatory Budgeting Renewable Energy Fund, pages 21 22. Is, is Kenny Lean available?
hear me? We can hear you, Kenny. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's a very brief report, as we can all see. Uh, it's a very short update just on the use of renewable energy funds uh, for our participatory budgeting. Uh, the report notes that we've been undertaking this through the microgrants since 2019-2020 and uh, updates the Hamilton on the grants within the Hamilton area. So by quarter one, four community councils had received the micro grants. Those are listed. And we have done quite a bit of work this year to ensure that the micro grants were out early within the financial year. So that then gives the community councils the ability to uh, promote and distribute the 500 pound grants to local community groups. So we're continuing to work with community councils to, to make sure that this is promoted within the area. Uh, Chair, that is the report. Thanks for that, Kenny. Any questions, comments? Councillor oh. Donnelly. Thanks for that report, Kenny. Um, there is other groups other than just community councils. Um, in my ward, in Ward 18, we have Vernock Residents Association and they're, they're able to make application for the, the 5,000, aren't they? Y yes. Uh, I think they're needing advice and guidance on how to go about that. It would be helpful if you could reach out to them. OK, thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, they are... The, the scheme has been set up so organisations which we believe can represent an area where a community council don't exist. And certainly, Ernick Residents Association are listed but haven't taken an opportunity, I believe, this year or last year. So we can certainly outreach to, to that group and uh, help them. We can do that. They're struggling how to do that, Kenny. Okay. I'll make a point of that, that's fine. Okay, thanks for that, Kenny. Thanks, Mary. Councillor Dempsey. Thank you, Chair. Um, not a question for Kenny, but uh, more a comment, just to see how uh, pleased I am to see uh, Bovo Community Council in here. Uh, £5,000, which uh, will go uh, a great way. Okay. Any other questions, observations? We agree to note the report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'm conscious of time also, folks, but hopefully we recognise the importance of our communities and our engagement with those communities. So the, this report is a chance to just give an update on neighbourhood planning activity in the areas across South Lanarkshire, um, and obviously in the, focusing on the Hamilton Lark Hall district for, for this particular purpose. Uh, and the first thing to say, it's useful, for, I think, for new members particularly to note that, you know, this is not only a community, a council priority, but a community planning priority, but there's also a statutory uh, nature to that when, when all of the kind of uh, statistical data is, is knocked together there is some real uh, hard evidence that we use to identify these areas. And in 2017, when the first sort of uh, tranche of neighbourhood planning areas were identified, we used that statistical evidence to highlight that those were the areas to start with. And those were um, the hub area, that's Hamilton, uh, sorry, uh, Hill House, Hudson and Burnbank, and in Sutherland, Birkinshaw and Lark Hall as well. So they've been they've been working on neighbourhood planning for a considerable time. And I would like to say that we, you know, we've seen definite moves forward with the communities addressing their own priorities and working with the council and other partners to identify those priorities, including our police colleagues that were along today. Um, so it's useful for I think for new members to note that. In terms of the the update, uh, we have to produce annual reports. Now, deliberately, uh, those are done in a very kind of user-friendly, easily read fashion because we want to get those back out to communities so that they recognise the, the issues that they've raised and how we're going to tackle them together. But also, I think it's a good way of, of, 
of publicising our work in these communities. So, as I say, I think primarily um, in, uh, in the, hu the hub area, you know, there's been a lot of good work done, um, I think particularly around the new community garden. Now, I'm going to preempt Councillor Donnelly, who I'm sure, who I'm sure will, will come in, but obviously there has been some real issues very recently about the Hillstop Cafe and some of the services that the community are providing for the local residents there. And I just want to reassure the councillor and the other members that our team are working very closely with the group and looking at the short-term funding that may be required to sustain the activity or get it kick-started again, but also for the longer term, because we recognise that communities really doing providing those services and providing a base for other services to come together at the one time is a great way of targeting our priorities. So I think that's a great example in, in the hub area. Um, I think the the work around the mugger pitches and the, the youth involvement in Strathallan and Birkinshaw is really useful as well. So as I say, I think the, the more the more developed neighbourhood plans, the areas with longer to, to lead in, have certainly moved forward. We do have to recognise that in terms of uh, particularly um, the Fair Hill plan and also Blantyre, we need a bit more engagement. Obviously, the, the pandemic has given us some real headaches in working with our communities closely. We know that the communities have done carried out some fantastic work in supporting their own communities through the pandemic, but we're now trying to re-engage with them. And I think, obviously, given si the size of Blantyre, we need to take quite a bit of time to make sure that that group is representative. Again, it started with coal-filled regeneration funding, not through the council. So I think there was some... There was some activity previously, but we'll really need to sort of re-kick kick start that activity in Blantyre mm -hmm. and in Fairhill. We also have that situation that while there's been some great work through the pandemic, we really need to engage closer with that community. So there's plenty of work for us to do. We're, in terms of future plans, we're looking at the... Um, just to confirm, yeah, we are looking at Hamilton South, uh, the, the various parts of Hamilton South, and we have produced a fledgling plan for White Hill, and it's identified the priorities, but we need to start to work that through. In terms of our future plans for this work, we're obviously going to continue to work with all of the neighbourhood communities in developing their plans, developing the processes, and a large part of that, an important part of that, is, and I'll also say PB, is local participatory budgeting schemes where the residents themselves vote on their own local priorities and award various funds to local projects. And I'm you know, very pleased to say that we have uh, a significant increase in the work and the, and the resources to tackle that over the next couple of years. And also we were, we were awarded um, 64,000 from the lottery to support this activity recently. So we, we should be able to work with communities to develop slightly larger projects, you know, maybe as much as up to £10,000, and we hope that that will address some of the community resilience issues and obviously things like the cost of living crisis. So I think, I think we, that's going to be an important uh, way of tackling some of those issues in our, in our communities. And just to, just to highlight as well that um, we, a lot of these issues then are localised and we're starting to aggregate, aggregate those issues and what we're trying to develop is a community partnership for each of the localities where community councils, community groups will come together and look at issues that affect their locality, not just their, their specific community. And we, we're trying to aggregate those issues up. That's very early days for those community partnerships. And we will produce a, a, an update report for, I think, the September committee uh, for the area committee just on the work in that. It's, it's been progressed initially in Camus, Lang and Rutherglen. There's, there's been further development work in um, Clydesdale, the, the partnership starting, but we know there's a lot of work to, to both develop the partnership in the Hamilton and Lark Hall area, but also in the East Cobride area, which obviously has a number of disparate communities. So uh, if I could just highlight the, the, the reports to the, to the councillors and uh, if the, the report could be noted. Thank you. Thanks for that, John. Any Questions? Okay. Councillor Clark. Yeah, thanks, Chair. I'd like to welcome the Progress in Neighbourhood Plan for Strutherland and Birkinshaw, which is in my 
uh, ward. There's been some great community work and engagement going on with uh, volunteers and the uh, Our Place Our Plan group. You've got people out chapping doors and so on to try and drive those numbers up in uh, in consultations. And it's welcome to see progress on things such as the, the mug at Robert Smiley and discussions on Primrose Lane. And I think it sets a good example uh, for other areas, and I look forward to the further progress. And I know specifically on the MUGA, there's a you know a competition going about just now for kids to design. I think it's a, a no bike, no litter sign or something like that. Uh, so that's going about social media. So social media, so it's a lot of good work there. And uh, it, you know things like chapping doors. If it's like a, obviously that's maybe not manageable in a bigger street, and you know with lots and lots of houses. But I think things like that set a good example for other areas. Uh, obviously, there's some. Every area has its problems, and uh, as I said, I look forward to seeing further progress. And I'm wondering if uh, I could get a copy of this sent uh, to me as well, a, a physical copy. Thanks. Okay, thanks on that, Councillor. Councillor Donnelly. Thank you. Um, I do take on board your comments. Um, I refer to the report item 6, 4.3, Hill House, Udston and Burnbank. Hill House, Udston and Burnbank was selected as a neighbourhood planning area in 2017, which was based on levels of poverty and the need to improve outcomes. Neighbourhood planning is being delivered using a solution-focused asset-based approach. This means making the best of the resources the community have, the people, the buildings, to mention a few. Neighbourhood planning is also about building confidence, increasing involvement and bringing about improvement through community action. The Hillstop Cafe is surely an example of um, community action. Uh, of neighbourhood planning at work because we have local people taking positive steps to address poverty at the root causes while promoting community spirit. I would therefore uh, like to bring, and I know you have mentioned it, but I would like to bring it to the area committee's attention that in terms of the remit of our powers, um, I would be asking um, if we could be asking the community engagement team to work with local groups, South Lanarkshire Leisure and Culture, who's they put on the rent charges, which is really put a, put a, a net, you know, a noose round the community's neck. They cannot pay the hall charges, and they do need a help. They need help in order to open back up. Um, they had to close their doors and I can on honestly tell you I linked into that cafe and had my surgeries up there I had standing room only waiting to see me for, for surgeries I was up today the cafe was not in existence and I had nobody at my surgery so that shows you the knock-on effect that it's having um, in, in terms of my surgery and in terms of the community who are really struggling. It is a poverty-stricken area and we do need to step up to the plate and help you. So I hope they three can come together with a solution. Thank you. Mary, as a resident of Hillhouse for about 60 odd years, I've got to say I've been through them all before. The urban aid, the SIP, the regeneration. We've now appointed a community engagement team to work with these groups. I understand it's quite well staffed. And obviously, I'll be asking John to go back to his seniors and look into that again. I also understand there is another cafe around in the church that Community Links run. Same time, so you have two cafes in the area. And I've got to say, I did attend the Hill House one two Wednesdays ago, and it was very busy. OK, John, would you be able to do that? OK. Mary? Just to say, yeah, right, there is a cafe around the corner, corner run by Community Links, but it certainly does not provide the depth of what the, the Hillstop Cafe provides in terms of food, uh, clothing, um, the money matters, you know, the wealth of it um, that's on offer to the community is in the Hillstop Cafe. Good to see they've got money matters up there. Hi, John. OK, well, I just wanted to... Thanks, Chair. I just wanted to reaffirm that we are working closely with the, the Community Action Group myself, but also with SSLC uh, around those, these issues and trying to 
look at ways of moving forward. Now, obviously, if we establish <coughs> one particular solution for one community, then there's always that issue that other communities are looking for similar deals or, or similar arrangements. So we have to make sure that it's a sustainable um, development. And I, I'm confident that the, the effort that we're putting in with the community, with the trust and with the council, we, 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 should, we should get to a good solution, I hope. OK, thanks for that, John. OK, can we approve the report? Indeed. Okay. On to item seven, community grant applications. Could I suggest that we take... Uh, we're going to take yours last. Sorry, we're going to take we're, we're taking A, B, D to I and block and excuse Councillor MacDonald as she's got an interest in C. number C. Is that okay? We agreed that? A, B, D and I. Agreed? Is there any questions on the grants? A, B, D to I. Agreed? Right. So you can now leave. Thank you. And now we go to Grant C. We agree to that? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. There's been no notice of any other urgent business. Thank you all for your attendance today and the officers for their assistance. Thank you. Thank you.